Well, good morning once again as we gathered into God's house uh, to worship and praise Him. It's good to welcome you on uh, Zoom as well as Facebook and certainly here in the presence. Uh, and it's nice to, uh, to be here together today. Uh, and on this Sunday after, uh, after Christmas, as we've uh, celebrated the, uh, the birth of our Savior, and we hopefully spend some time with uh, the loved ones as we uh, gather together to do that celebration. So as we begin today, we want to, uh, to pray together. Uh, I know there are those we want to, uh, to remember in prayer. If you remember uh, brother-in-law Don Riley, he had uh, surgery on his neck this week to... Uh, uh, remove some bone spurs uh, that had been real painful to him, and he uh, ended up making a trip back to the emergency room uh, because of swelling. Uh, but they're hopefully expecting him to release him this afternoon and, uh, to pray for his, his healing. Also, for Cheryl's dad, uh, he had cataract surgery this week and uh, he's doing well. Uh, so, just to make sure that that will continue. There's a family here in town that uh, lost a, um, one of their, their daughters uh, this week on Christmas Eve. Um, and, uh, and feel that, so just remember them in this time they lost to be one of their others. Uh, but they're still dealing with that, whether it's current and fresh or whether it's uh, uh, been in the, uh, time in the past. It's still a, a difficult time to, to be without a loved one. So I'm going to be with them pray for them too. Are there other prayer requests that you'd like to share this morning as we begin? No praises. I would like to pray for Cindy. Okay. Again. Sure. How's she, uh, she come along? Uh, she just got uh, pretty bad news uh, a lot here. She went to uh, Okay. Uh, she got bad news about a lot of now we're just we're just going to see what she's doing and all that. They're still raising up their minds, so we're kind of in limbo. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I remember Cindy and all the rest of the family. It's that's not just her. She's uh, exactly. the one with the the, uh, the physical condition, but the rest of you are all affected too. So. Um, just prayers for my sister Karina. I asked um, her and her boyfriend to be to Arizona. They're okay. leaving Monday. Are they gone? Okay. You know, they're going to pray. They make bad steps. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, let's pray together again as we can. Um, Father, we do honor you today. And, uh, and we do uh, praise your great name for all that you are as we've been able to. Uh, take a time to uh, to celebrate uh, the birth of um, the Savior, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, and to be sure that our focus is uh, on, on you and that gift that you gave us. Uh, we enjoy the time of, of family and being able to get together because of, uh, of these things, uh, but Father, may that always be uh, our, our focal point that it is you, that you gave us a gift of your son. So Father, we, uh, we honor you today. And we ask you to be with these needs that we've just shared. Uh, for Don, and for Paul, and for Karina, and, uh, for Cindy, and uh, for others, Father, that, uh, that we know of that uh, need your touch in body. Uh, for, for healing, for strength, for uh, direction, for decisions that need to be made, for uh, understanding, uh, Father, for the ones that have lost uh, loved ones, especially uh, in this time uh, of what would normally be a, a joyous and happy time, the grief that is there, that you would just be especially close uh, and uh, lift hearts uh, with encouragement to uh, be uh, especially uh, close in this time as uh, as they deal with these, these things uh, of loss and realize that you are with us no matter what. Uh, the circumstances that we find ourselves in in life, uh, that you are there. So Father, we are you in that. And we ask you to continue to be with our, our nation and, and our world uh, around. There seems to be 
so many things that would uh, point to uh, problems and unrest and uh, the, the things that, that happen out there uh, between people and between nations and so Father that uh, just create turmoil uh, that there would be peace uh, you came to give us peace um, and we know that this, this world is uh, now under the authority of, of Satan but that's only for a short time for we know the end of the story uh, but in the meantime, we still pray for your peace uh, to be with us. And that that would spread out to others that we come in contact with because of the peace that you give us. Uh, Father, we just uh, thank you for what you are doing in that. We ask you to uh, be with us today as we have come, uh, that uh, we would receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, as we uh, gather this last four weeks, we have been talking about uh, the star and uh, how that uh, it was a journey, and we went on the, uh, the journey of hope was our first week, and the journey of, of love, and then the journey of joy, and then the journey of peace. And there's another journey that has taken place because of that star. Uh, you know, when we search for things, um, stuff to do. Have you ever searched for anything? You know, it's, it's there. I know one of the uh, parables that Jesus told was about the uh, uh, the woman that lost a coin out of the ten that she had, and she searched her whole house uh, to find that one coin because of how valuable that coin was to her. Uh, but it was not just, uh, we might say today, uh, I, I dropped a penny. Yeah, it's no big deal. I'm not going to look for that. Or uh, the difference being, hey, I dropped a $100 bill, and I went, oh, where did that go? I'm going to search for that. And, and how we determine what's important that we search for. Um, you've probably all seen uh, the, uh, the Finding Waldo books, right? Uh, the guy that's uh, hidden amongst everything else with the red and white striped shirt and blue pants on and, and stuff, and you got to look for him and find him. Oh, yeah, there he is amongst all the rest of the things that would try to hide him even though they are <coughs> regular things in society and the things that are out there in that world that's there. Um, and stuff, you may have even heard of the play of Finding Godot uh, and stuff to where there's a couple of guys standing by a tree waiting for this guy Godot to show up and he doesn't. And somebody comes and says, oh, he'll be here tomorrow. And so they leave and they come back the next day and oh, he'll be here tomorrow. And that, how that, that goes is they're searching and finding for something. Well, what if I told you guys that there was something sweet and chewy and maybe even nutty, uh, maybe it have some caramel in it, uh, and I've told you where to find something like that that would be so enticing. Um, well, I bring you good, morning, good news of great joy uh, to everyone who finds those items in the Christmas trees. And they're wrapped in snuggly uh, pieces of various kinds of paper. Now, if you kids and the adults want to, you can go search for some of that because it's here in the room and stuff to do. Whether you do that now or after service, there's some things that you can search for out there that you go, oh wow, that's neat, I found that. You know, we've been told about some pretty good things in, in the locker uh, and where to find them. And now what is it that we are going to do because of that? How are we going to address that? What are we going to do because of it? Um, in First Chronicles, uh, it talks in the 16th chapter, verse 11, it says, Search for the Lord and for His strength. Continually seek Him. To search for something. And what is it that we search for? Is it just uh, those things of, uh, of Waldo? Is it uh, the things of uh, in the play of Finding Godot, or is it searching for the candy that's hidden in the room? Or are we searching for God? And that's what that took place on that Christmas Eve night, was searching for Jesus. The, the shepherds started off that story. As we've talked about over the last several weeks, uh, found in uh, in. Luke chapter 8, chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. 
is the story of the shepherds and their search. Uh, if you want to follow along with me, uh, you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, beginning of verse 8. It says, That night some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger wrapped in snuggly strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened, what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them. And because they had seen the child, just as the angel <coughs> had said. <coughs> when the shepherds received that, that news about finding something so amazing, they decided to go search. And it says there in scriptures, they went out and looked, looked for what they had been told about. And they found it. They acted on what they had heard. And they went to find that. So many times when we're told about something, we go, well, when I have time, I'll, I'll try to get to that uh, and stuff that, that's there. But the shepherds said that very night, they said, man, let's go see, let's go find this. And so they did. One of the other places that we find about searching that we've talked about too is in Matthew chapter 2, where it talks about the wise men and their search. Uh -huh. So Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, is another story of searching. It says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the east lands, eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. So here they saw the star, and without being told about what it was, and they decided, we're going to go search, we're going to go look for this and what it means because they said, oh man, this is the newborn king of the Jews. Continues on here, it says, King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked them, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And of you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with wise men, with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. Even King Herod wanted to have somebody search for this that had been proclaimed. The wise men came because they saw the star and realized, hey, this something's going on. This must be through their revelations, the, the king of the Jews. Now Herod is wanting them to search for this baby. And uh, he sent them on to, to do that. Uh, and it says, and when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. So it's amazing to see 
what that star did. You know, we usually see stars in the sky and it's pretty stationary to our, our visibility, our vision uh, and stuff. But if you take a time-lapse photography, you see the pattern that's created as the Earth turns uh, and stuff. But this star was different, that it came and guided them to a specific place and stopped over the place where Jesus was. <clears throat> and uh, it says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened the treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. These wise men came because of what they had foretold in the star. They saw it as a prophecy. And they came and searched for that child. They came to worship a new king that had been born. It would be like foreign dignitaries coming from other countries when the United States elects a new president. They're coming to uh, honor him, to be there, to be there for the celebration. In the way scripture says, that's sort of what that looked like. Because it says they went and left back to their own country. And no place in scripture does it tell us that they were changed because of what they saw, of who they met. It didn't change them. Jesus was born as a baby and as a savior to change us, not just to be worshiped. We certainly worship him because of who he is, but he also changes us. We also see a little bit farther in scripture in Luke chapter two, we're back there again at the beginning of verse 21, when Simeon had been searching for something that God had told him about. It says eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, and they gave <clears throat> the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Then it was time for their purification offering, as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So he was in anticipation. He was older in years. He was been anticipating and searching for the Messiah that God told him was coming. And he had been told he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And he was anticipating that. Since that day the Spirit led him to the temple so when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby, the baby Jesus, to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. And he took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. And as a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will will pierce your very soul. So Jesus' parents, 
uh, were doing as the law required, Scripture says, that to take this firstborn male to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord. And that's when they found that somebody had been searching for their child, Jesus. The, uh, this weekend, as we as a family read the, this story, <clears throat> my six-year-old granddaughter said, well, why didn't Mary and Joseph understand what was going on? Because they didn't know the rest of the story that we know at this point. We still don't know all the story. We anticipate what's going to happen. But they were just told a certain portion that we now are privileged to, to know that Jesus, through his life, lived, and what he did while he was here on earth, and that he was crucified and rose to life again to give us life. They didn't understand those things. They wondered at it. They thought, like, man, you know, God gave us this child, and it's his son, but they didn't have a clear picture of what that was going to turn out to be like. But they were obedient. They were doing what was required. And Simeon was there to give a little bit more insight to them, as he said, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He didn't just say, I, I've seen the Savior, but salvation. He saw the end of what was going to happen, not just the beginning. When the Savior was born, we go, oh yeah, we see that. But the salvation is what is the end result of Jesus being born. Simeon said Jesus was a gift from God. And he recognized him as the Messiah, as that Savior that brought salvation, and that he would be a light to the entire world. Not just the people of Israel, but to the entire world. But he also realized that Jesus would be rejected by them with a result. And it will be their undoing, he said. And yet it will be the greatest joy to many others. See, there is no neutral ground in the belief about Jesus. It's either we believe who he said he was and not coming to be the Savior and bringing us salvation and that there is no other way to get to God and to find eternal life. Or he's totally rejected. There's no middle ground. It's one or the other. Can't be, well, I sort of believe, and I, I hope this is true, and God will surely accept me, and, and uh, I've been good, and, and surely he would take me. Uh, and so none of that matters unless we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. That search that we have. We can search all we want for those other things in life. Search for the perfect Christmas gift. Search for the candy that we have. Search for uh, that missing piece uh, that may be one of the things in, in life. Search for the perfect job. Search for the perfect me. Search for all of those kinds of things. And we may find those things. But none of that matters unless we search for Jesus and find him and do something about it. It's not enough to know about Jesus. It's not enough to just say, oh yeah, I see that he was. Oh yeah, that's your birthday we celebrate. We just did that yesterday. That's good enough for me to know. I have to do something. But I can't be like the wise men who came to worship and go, wow, that was really neat. I enjoyed that. I'm going to go home. And it didn't change them. There's no neutral ground. We have to make a choice of who Jesus is. My salvation. Or I'm just hoping for the best. We have to make a choice. Isaiah 49, 6 tells us, uh, long before Jesus was born, uh, he says, You will do more than restore the people of Israel to me. I will make you a light to the Gentiles, and you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. That was God's plan for Jesus. To be a light not only to the people of Israel, but to the Gentiles, to everyone. And to bring salvation to everyone 
to the ends of the earth. And Luke, we also see uh, where he tells us in uh, chapter 2, beginning to verse 45, uh, he says, when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem. This story of when Jesus was 12, and he had uh, taken the trip with his family to Jerusalem, uh, and said they, when they left, he didn't go with them. And they couldn't find him, and they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. It says, three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. You know, sometimes uh, if you can't find something in your house, uh, whether it's a particular kitchen item or a tool or whatever it is, and you search and search for it, uh, but you ask somebody else, well, I can't find this. And they say, oh, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> that they know. Uh, and stuff to do, no matter how hard you search. And that's sort of the picture of what took place here in this portion of the story. That Jesus understood. He knew. He said, I, I, I had to be in my father's house. Doing my father's business. Why were you searching for me? He said, because Mary and Joseph didn't know the full extent of the story yet. They didn't understand that. And they got a clearer picture of that too. And because Jesus knew what the end of the story was. He was going to be that salvation for the world. And he knew what that story was. The psalmist tells us in Psalms 9, it says, those who know your name trust in you for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. When we search for God, he does not give up. And it's not like he's hiding from us and hide and seek uh, and stuff. He's there and just wanting us to say, hey, I'm trying to find you. And that's enough. Uh, that we need to search for God. To not just be willing to say, oh, well, whatever happens, happens. But to search for him because when we do, he doesn't give up on us. He does not abandon us. But we got to be careful what we search for. Because the psalmist also tells us, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. It's because we can search for other things and find other things that we're not expecting to. Uh, that uh, He tells us again in Psalms 40, but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great. That we can search for God and find how great that he is. Uh, because of who he is and what he wants for us. And another place in Psalm 63 he says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. That realization of what we can sometimes feel like. Man, I can't find this. I can't find what I'm looking for. I can't seem to find God. But the psalmist says, when I search for him, I got panting for water in this dry and weary land, he reveals himself to us. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given, you children of his servant Abraham, you descendants of Jacob, the chosen ones. The Proverbs tells us, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom. Concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight. Ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. 
Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will again have knowledge of God. To search. To seek those things out, as he said. Search for them as you would for silver. Sometimes we, in our culture today, spend more time searching for that perfect Christmas gift for somebody else, or searching for uh, that particular piece of clothing, or searching for whatever it may be that we spend on searching for God. What is the value that we place on finding God? Is our salvation, not the momentary things of this world that will be gone anyway, but to search for Him and to understand what it is. Are we searching or finding something for ourselves? You know, it's popular in our culture today to say, Hey, I, I, I gotta go find myself. People are searching for themselves in all different kinds of ways and places and trying new things and stuff to, to find themselves in different things. But first, we need to search and find Jesus, our salvation. And then, everything else falls in place because we have found the most valuable thing that has ever been given us. Why? Would you pray with me as we close? Father, we thank you. Thank you for the gift that you gave. Thank you for your blessings to us. And that the search that we have in finding Jesus is not a difficult search. For you want to be found. You are there at our every turn. All we have to do is say, God, I want to find you. And there you are. Change us because we find you. Help us to not be like the wise men that came and apparently were not changed. They just came to worship and that was enough. And we go on to back to what they were doing. And we change us because we find your salvation. Thank you. It's good to be with you all.